Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to look at transfer learning with Keras. We're going to start at the very beginning and go through a number of applications of transfer learning in Keras as we progress through this module. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the, the upcoming videos. Here we're going to train just a simple neural network. We're going to then take the weights from that neural network, transfer it to a new neural network, and learn to predict on a new sort of data set. So we'll fine tune it based on what it had originally learned. The link to my Jupyter Notebook is in the description to this video. I am going to go ahead and open it in Google Colab, just so that everything displays correctly and that we can actually run the code. I'll go ahead and run this part just to initialize Colab. It's not completely necessary since we're not hooking to the G drive. What we're going to do in this example is I am going to train a neural network for the Iris data set, just like you've seen a million times probably before. But we're going to put a twist on it. I'm going to use a new data set that I created. I just completely made it up that gives a cost for 200 or so iris flowers. They have the same measurements, the length, the width, the petal width, for the original iris data set. So if you've not seen Fisher's iris data set before, it's a tabular data set with a bunch of measurements for, for, for the petal and the sepal on a iris flower. And then it classifies those into three different categories of species of iris flower. So I created a fake data set based on random values that I put in for these four measurements, but within the ranges of the real flowers, then I, I mapped those random measurements to realistic iris flowers and estimated a cost. We're going to see if we can use a data set or a neural network trained on the classic iris data set to predict costs on this fake data set that I created. So we'll, we'll see that as I go through. So the very first thing that I'm doing is I am training a neural network on the IRIS data set, the classic, classic IRIS data set. And if you haven't seen IRIS data set before, this is it, the four measures, and then the classes of IRIS flower. And it's sorted by the type of IRIS that it is. So here you can see that it trained, it got to the end, the loss, these are log losses, was very low. So it trained quite, quite well. We'll run the prediction. We'll see what the accuracy is. It's about 99% accuracy. So it's doing quite good. Now, this is not on any sort of validation data set that I set aside. I'm really just trying to demonstrate the mechanics of transferring the weights. So we're keeping, keeping this very simple and just, just training and showing the training in sample error. Let's look at a model summary and see what this iris data, see what this iris neural network looks like. You see the dense layer here that accepts 50 inputs. The inputs come actually before it. You have the, the four measurements coming into a hidden layer that has 50 hidden neurons on the first one, 25 on the next, and then we have a softmax layer where we're predicting those three different iris flowers. So these three output neurons, whatever iris flower is, has the highest number coming out of this, that is the, the iris that's been classified. And we're using softmax, so the outputs of those three neurons should sum to one. So each of those becomes the probability. So maybe the first one is 0.7, and the next two are each 0.15, adding to 30. So the whole thing adds up to to 1.0, 70% is the probability that it's the first iris flower. Now we're going to create a new variant of that iris neural network just to show that we can. So what I'm doing here, we're not even, go we're going to transfer the whole thing, which is effectively a clone. I'm creating a second model, model two, that is sequential in Keras. That's just your, your holder for this type of a neural network. We're going to loop across all the layers in the neural network that we just trained, add them one by one, and then print out a summary. 
So look at this, awesome. It looks just like the, the prior one. We've basically cloned it. And if we predict it, just to show that the weights were cloned as well, the weights are the parameters, 98%. So awesome. We've proved that we can clone a neural network. But I took those, those layers in one by one. I don't have to necessarily take all of them. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to create a new neural network that doesn't have all of those. And just to make it fun, those three neurons at the very end that made this a classification problem, we're going to do regression because we're going to try to predict the cost of an iris. Let me show you my fake data set. So let's see these side by side. Here is the real Fisher's iris data set. And then here is my fake one. You can see I made the, the four measures look really pretty similar in terms of their ranges. I didn't do any correlations between, between them, but I did run, I did do predictions of the, the four that I created so that we had a, so that the cost really does, there is actually signal there. It is, it is correlated the cost to what iris my four random measures would have actually come up with how i actually generated this data set is really not material to the example just think of each of these as a cost so we've got the cost data set but we've also got this classification data set so i can train on classic iris and then use this new data set to train another final layer of the neural network because we're going to rip off those three neurons that were classifying the three different types of iris, replace it just with one neuron that has weights back to the previous layer. So let's go ahead and load in my fake iris data set. There you can see it in pandas form. We just saw it in Excel. Now I'm going to create the new neural network. This is model three. I'm going to loop all the way up to, but not including the final layer. And we're going to put in all of those layers and I'm going to set them to trainable false. That way the weights don't get modified when I'm training this. You can see the new neural network here. It's, it's got 50. It's got the same inputs as the original neural network, but it's got the outputs. There are no, but it's got no output layer because I just went up to two. I didn't, I didn't move everything over. Now, one thing that's important here is the input to this is three neurons. I can't go and add a fourth. The input to that, one thing that's very important here is the input to this. There are the same four neurons, the same four measurements that came from the iris data set. I can't go add another fifth measurement. Not for tabular data. Now for computer vision, you can change the resolution and even aspect ratio coming into the, the, the first convolution layer, which is really powerful because often the resolution of the image you want to recognize does not match with the neural network that you're transferring to. Now how that works gets into how convolution layers actually work. So we'll talk more about that when we do computer vision. But for this one, just know you cannot, you can't change that input vector. It's got to match it, especially for tabular data. Convolution layers let you do some, some neat magic there to, to change your input structure. Okay, so we're going to add our final layer. That's our one output neuron, which is the dense layer. We're going to use mean squared error as the loss function because we're switching to regression. Adam will also be the optimizer. Let's go ahead and run that. All right, now we are going to convert that data set to NumPy, just like we've done many times before, and then we're going to fit it. So we're fitting the same four inputs, but we're fitting it to those regression numbers. And we train, 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 and then we are basically done with it. Let's evaluate the error. 1.39 mean squared error. That's not too bad. That's in the same measurements as here. You can see some of these numbers up around 10 or so. 
So it's it's not crazy crazy accurate, but it is getting it, it it's it's definitely learning. And like I said, it is a made up data set, but I did engineer it so that there is there is signal in there. So there's something that it it can absolutely pick up from from the original Iris data set. So that's it. That's the first introduction to transfer learning. Thank you for watching this video. And if you want to see the other videos related to transfer learning and Keras, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you do not miss anything. And if this video was like was helpful to you, please give me a like. Thank you very much.